All right. Blade, Isla, DJ, hope you guys are doing good. Rob will be good, too. How are you? Good. Went for my chicken to get done to you? Yeah, doing pretty good. I am hoping my new controller will be delivered during a stream, but it might not be. We'll have to see. Could come anytime between now and 9 p.m., so I honestly have no idea. All right, Tuesday, September 11th morning. Damn, we're coming right back on 9 11. That's crazy. <laughs> Top of the Thursday morning, PO. We don't have any callers today, so I'll bring up one of my own pet peeves. PO, positive or that key? The idiotic plans for pedestrianization of Main Street. It's. <sighs> well. Don't get me started, or I won't even have time for the weather. Speaking of, a few clouds early on, but they will be gone soon. Yeah, Easy see time. Okay, where is everything today? Uh, most of it's here, but we got a package way down there. What's up, girl? Damn it. Good things, how are you? Yeah, good. Here's your mail. Uh... Sure. <laughs> good old teleport and mail. If my new controller does not come by the time it's for me to spin the wheel, then the wheel spin's gonna be a bit unique because if I get anything that requires a controller, we're gonna spin again. <laughs> Terrible example for the children. Ah. 
God, I must have cried. This looks like cookies. Ding dong. Nope. No answer. There you go. Well, I didn't hope nobody jacks your cookies, because I know I would. And this is the 80s, so... No doorbell camera. I mean, you're boned. What's up, Quit? Ah, uh, I got one more up over here. Yeah, we're right back. You doing good? It's good. Oh dear, you're a sight for sore eyes. Oh hi, Miss J Mildred. How so? Are you expecting more mail from your son? It's just this week. It's all a bit much for me. I need to get my hair done for Sunday's special evening, but I can't leave my cats alone. And then all of a sudden, Frank has gone missing. He still needs to bring me an envelope. Please tell me that you have it with you. I'm afraid this is just a postcard. Sam Tekaleo is going to NXT. I saw that. I'm pleasantly surprised, to be honest, because... I think it's good for both him and for NXT because he's a solid worker. He's a really solid worker for a guy who's six foot nine. But he's better than people give him credit for. But he's also still a bit green. So I think NXT can help him. And on the flip side, NXT's men's division is pretty thin at the moment. Like, I, I really I am struggling to wonder where the winner of Trick and Even even goes. Unless Obafemi drops his belt, then they probably go to him. So they need more bodies down there on the men's side. So I, I think it's a win-win. Good for him and good for NXT. Plus, he probably won't be down there very long, to be honest. But what do you mean he needs to bring you an envelope? Oh, don't be a nosy posy, Meredith. Oh, dear, oh, dear. He can't just have vanished into thin air, can he? Probably make Noble Oba look almost like uh, Oba's got more muscle than he does, but but Hikaleo's got more height. I wish I could tell you where he is. Oh, Frankie boy, always making me worry too much. And I need to cancel the hairdresser's appointment. But what if I can't reschedule? Perhaps I could look after your cats. Would you, my dear? It's tomorrow evening. 
That would be such a relief for me. And the cats. Tomorrow night? Sure, no trouble at all. Oh, thank you so much, dear. Just show up at seven and eat as many cookies as you like. Hell yeah, brother. The cookies shall be mine. Her fucking hair might look exactly the same after she gets it done. Defense Secretary wants to increase more groups in the military by wanting to increase drone drivers uh, by saying gamers, your country needs you. <laughs> Good lord. Hey yo! How about this box? Meredith, look at this house on wheels. I have no idea where it came from, but it's absolutely rad. It's mine, actually. Mickey and June gave it to me. You know that young couple down by the lake campground. Whoa, really? That's so tight. Here, they left this note on the driver's seat. Oh, let me read it. Life's a journey and not a destination. Just grab the wheel and enjoy the ride. Love, M and J. Michael and Jackson? Oh, so, what are you going to do with it? You have to hit the road. Hee <laughs> hee. I actually don't really want it after all. Maybe you'd like to have it. You know, keep it here and tinker on it? Oh, yes. That'd be amazing. You know I love tinkering. But it's going to need a lot of work. Good to hear, Lori. I can already oh. hear the cops. Bro's carrying nothing. <laughs> top speed. What are your plans? Well, if it's going to be here a while, I should give it a name first. Can't have such a beautiful vehicle and not give it a name. How about the Sea Turtle? Big, slow, washed up, just like a turtle. Or the Raccoon. Like a turtle. Because it's got brown spots and is full of trash. Or the hermit shell it had many owners over the years just like the shell of a hermit crab i like the sea turtle good choice i'll get working on it right away see you later bye i also like sea turtle Whoa. What's up, Chip? Any chance Jay wins the SE title? He's definitely got a chance. Absolutely. I, I don't think the odds are in his favor, but he's definitely got a chance. I'd say it's like 60-40, Braun. Maybe 65-35. I mean, Jay is a, a top star, and this would be the next logical step with him to give him this belt, but I really can't see Braun losing two months into having the belt. I'd be shocked if it was a squash. I, I don't even think it'll be a clean finish, to be honest. I think Jade's gonna get fucked by the Judgment Day. You, 
you could also swerve bro it and have him get screwed by the bloodline to get him back involved in that. Ah, yes, yes, yes. He could only look on in sheer terror as Madeline threw the key straight into the lake. Oh, yes. <laughs> this is good stuff. Excuse me, sir? No, oh, for Christ's sakes, go away! If I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times! You haven't told me anything. I'm, I'm new here. Oh, bloody heck. Do I sound like I care? You lot are all the same to me. Bruh. Just go away! How many yokels are there in this backwater town? Do they realize people come out to these kinds of places because they're supposed to be remote and quiet? Apparently so, shit, yeah. Sir, if you don't want to be disturbed, don't mail order anything. <laughs> Got him. I, I do beg your pardon. I, yes, I am expecting a package. I didn't know you were from the postal service, ma'am. You didn't know anything about me before you started shouting, and yet you did it anyway. All right, all right, I'm sorry. It's just... I've been under a lot of pressure lately from my publisher, as well as my wife. I do I not do care. I appreciate your driving all the way up here. And Lord knows I'll be needing those ribbons. Just please leave them on the porch and... Uh, thank you. You're welcome, sir. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Now, where was I? She threw the key in the lake. Then what happens? Oh, Christ's sake, she made me lose my bloody train of thought. No, wait, I got it. And then he says... It's that package on fire. My sweater, nerd. Good afternoon, Miss Weiss. Good afternoon, Mr. Morgan. I wanted to let you know that today was my last day here. I see. Well, thanks for the help. Where are you going now? That's all I have to say. Good luck. Now on for conversation, I guess. Wife's residence, Thursday afternoon. Hello? Hi, Em. It's me, Kay. Oh, hi, Kay. Good. You're home. Listen, I don't know if you're busy tonight, and I wouldn't normally bother you like this, but I'm kind of in a huge pickle at the moment, and now I'm imagining being inside of a huge pickle. Thanks, brain. You sound a bit agitated. Okay, so this is going to sound like I'm 16, but I have these tickets to a really big concert tonight for Barry and me, and it seems the babysitter has just bailed on me. All right, so maybe the babysitter part doesn't sound like I'm 16, I hope. I <laughs> hope not, yeah. Anyway, it's Journey, so I'm like, oh, oh it's I Journey, fuck. And I got these tickets ages ago, and it's a long drive to Portland, so we'll probably be out all night, and I promise you I've called everyone and their brother besides. They're really good kids to watch tonight. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, funny, Hikaleo is going to next team with Tonga Loa and start the main roster. Oh, you want Tonga Loa to do singles matches? <laughs> they put Tonga Loa on the main roster so he could do tags. That's it. <laughs> Can I get a shortcut to the question? <laughs> yeah, sorry. You're totally right. I'm blabbering on r and I. Okay, don't freak out. You got this. All right, recap. Journey tonight in Portland. Got tickets. Sitter bailed. So I guess you figured out by now that I'm awkwardly trying to ask if maybe you could do me a huge favor and watch Grace and Max tonight. Is he trying? No, I mean he's. I feel bad for the guy because I again, I, like I said, he he used to be pretty serviceable, and he had a knee injury which kept him out over a year, and since then he hasn't really been the same. 
And I mean, he's 40, so uh, he's pretty much cooked. <laughs> hey, it's fine. Don't worry. I'll babysit tonight. Oh my god, he's serious? That would help me out in such a big way! And I would owe you big time. Huge! You would, wouldn't you? Hmm, interesting. Oh dear, never mind. Don't care. Can you be here around 6 p.m., so in like 30 minutes? You don't have to bring anything. There's food, videos, even a cardboard replica of Apollo 11 with a set of matching helmets. Sick. Covered. See you in a bit. All right. See ya. All right. Who wants s'mores? Friday, September 12th, morning. Hey, 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 guess who's back? I spin Frank? there. I didn't expect you here. I'm so happy to be here again. I guess Morgan didn't stick around to welcome me back. Well, I guess I can't blame him. Oh, well, he'll never get his way here. What happened the last few days? Well, what can I say? Don't mess with the big boys. I guess he didn't understand that some of my customers do a little more than talking about their cats. Are they criminals? <laughs> no, no, nothing that bad. Frank Coleman's no stranger to the high-stakes game. I've got lawyers in my inner circle. All it took were a couple of lawsuit threats. But Frank, isn't this all just really wrong? Nah, Meredith, it's just a bit of harmless fun. Okay, Frank, if you say so. All right, time to get back in the saddle. Have a great day, Meredith. Okay. What's up, James? A very good morning, Providence Jokes. Here, positive for that key. I wonder what it'll be today. Actually, no. What's up, Rob? The floor is yours. Yeah, Jack, I've got a pet peeve. Why do people start big coughing when I'm smoking in my store? Bruh. If you don't like it, just leave. Thank you much, Nancy. And, well, if you're asking, it's not like people have other places to go besides the smokehouse that you call a general store. On to the weather forecast. Sunny in the first half of the day and some clouds in the second. Back to the playlist. Pan Ray Rip. Huh? Huh, what? Here's your mail. You've been here a bit, have you? Let me see. Oh, yeah, you have. My bad. I get you and Quaid mixed up sometimes because you're the same color. You said hi earlier? Listen, Rob, you can't expect me to remember things that happened 10 minutes ago. I was way overestimating my memory. Ooh, interesting. Four oh two Pine Street. At least he won tag title. He was literally, bro, they gave him a tag title. <laughs> Solo Lyra said, here you go. <laughs> Driving along the highway Above the side of me Freebird roll, baby, hell yeah. Hello? Friday delivery day. 
Well, just call me Friday Delivery K. Had a okay. line of no, that's uh, place for mm. in my head. Someone's in a good mood today. Yes. Thanks for looking after Max and Gracie last night. He were a real trooper for stepping in last minute. No problem. They were great. I appreciate the lie. <laughs> so. How was the concert? <laughs> oh, yeah. Man, Journey is so good. Those songs have been stuck in my head all day. Eh, that sounds great. I know, right? There's just so much cool stuff being created right now, you know? I mean, Journey was cool. I got to know them through Barry at first, but I tell you, if Prince or New Order ever came to Portland, I would sell my spleen for tickets. One spleen, two bands. That's quite the potential dilemma. Oh, and I haven't even mentioned Cindy Lauper, band, or Red DMC, or Stevie Wonder. And before you go there, I know you're probably setting up a joke about spleens and ham and organs right now. <laughs> Joke's on you, because I don't even know what that means. You know, music <laughs> organ, body organ. Never mind. It's I'll just decide, though. I spent half the concert thinking about how I haven't really focused on my own music for a while now. Kids, work, all that stuff. So much going on. And I mean, I love tinkering, but right now, I'm not sure I'm even creating anything cool or just... You know? Not even Barry is allowed to listen to my songs at this stage, to be honest. Maybe you're just not ready yet. Exactly. Not sure if that's where I'm at right now. I was thinking, I have a mixtape with some of my stuff, you know? Just something I've been trying out with my new synthesizer. And you want me to listen to it, maybe? And hey, don't tell me what you think yet, yeah? You'll be my secret special audience of one. Like we're so in, I yeah. Get used to the idea. Been doing a little bit. Audience. First time I actually played this for. Uh... First time I actually played this in like a month though. Would this have anything to do with Sunday evening? Okay, don't tell anyone. But I'm thinking of performing a song on my new synth this Sunday. Holy crap! I just said that out loud, dude. You are coming to the open mic, right? I told you bitches it was open night night. <laughs> of course, that's great. Wild horses couldn't drag me away. But act cool, yeah? No one else knows yet. Oh, I do remember that. See you there. Sure thing. I think I've seen that. Have a great day. Thanks. You too. I'll probably replay the Christmas special too around December. Only change that will be made to the wheel next time we use it will be, uh, well, aside from today, will be Yakuza Zero replaced with Yakuza Kiwami. But like I said, if my controller doesn't get here by the time I spin, then we'll we're gonna respin if we land on something that requires a controller. Turn. 
400 Lakeview Boulevard. E Lakeview Boulevard, excuse me. Oh, that's the only actual package left. The rest is uh, letters. Is that not him? Ah, the waxworms have arrived. Excuse me? I meant the package, Miss Weiss. It's my worms. For fishing. They're just in time. Like I'm taking pause? a boat to the island this afternoon. Oh, nice. A boat trip. Hey, you can tag along if you want, like your father used to. But I'm not helping you with any wax worms. Oh, really? Sounds like fun. Okay, we'll show up here at 4 p.m. sharp. Bet. Probably could put that package in. Yeah, true. But then I'd have worms in my passenger seat, so you know. Who don't want anger to Yakuza by playing with mouse? Yeah, true, yeah. Bro, Yakuza use gamepad after all. You know, I was curious from playing those games, so I looked up, like, like how big the, um, the Japanese Yakuza is nowadays, and it's quite literally a dying breed. Their numbers in, like, the 80s used to be around 60,000. Now, apparently, it's about 10,000, and the average age is about 54. So, ultimately, I guess they couldn't get young people to join the Yakuza anymore. So like, unless they buck that trend, that Japanese Yakuza might not even exist in 30 years. He's had some dealings with New Japan. Oh yeah, and with um, here's your man with uh, Pride. They pretty much owned Pride. Like, when Dana White and the UFC bought Pride, um, they realized that they bought it with the intention of, uh, they bought it with the intention of running it adjacent to the NXT, but they found out, uh, none of the, um, none of the contracts were legit. And then the TV deals were legit either, because they were all fruity Yakuza. <laughs> so basically, they spent all that money for a tape library. Vince just tweeted out a novel about Doc. Did he really? It must be that that doc must be pretty damning then. Yeah, he did his first tweet since April of last year. Let's see, what did he say? I don't regret participating in this Netflix documentary. The producers had an opportunity to tell an objective story about my life and the incredible business I built, which were equally filled with excitement, drama, fun, and a fair amount of controversy and life lessons. Unfortunately, based on... Uh, on an early partial cut, I've seen Doc fall short and takes the breakable path of conflating the Mr. McMahon character with my true self, Vince. The title and promos alone make that evident. Uh, law has been misinterpreted and left out entirely in an effort to leave viewers intentionally confused. The producers use typical editing, tri editing tricks without any co out of context footage and dated sound bites to distort the viewer's perception and support a deceptive narrative. In an attempt to fervor their misleading account, the producers use a lawsuit based on the affair I ended as evidence that I am, in fact, Mr. McMahon. <laughs> what the fuck? I hope the viewer will keep an open mind and remember there are two sides to every story. 
Yeah, whatever, old man. The self yeah, sounds like that's what it's going to be. I hope he realizes that he just drew a lot more attention towards the documentary. Exactly. I don't, now I'm even more interested in it. Because that makes me think, oh, they're actually going to fucking tear him apart. Because I have my doubts. Hi there. How are you doing? Meow. Ted Turner, whatever. Is Ted Turner still alive, or did he die recently? I can't remember. No, he's still alive. He has dementia, unfortunately. But he's still alive. But the thing is, I've seen some people say they didn't go as hard at him as they could have. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess we'll see. The fact that he's trying to do damage control, though, makes me think the opposite. like bills. I don't know, that one looked like a postcard to me. Rocks block my shortcut. What the fuck put those rocks there? I don't know, Quaid. I think you, Netflix usually releases stuff in bulk, though, don't they? Meredith. Hey, Robert. How are you? I was away for a few days on an urgent job out of state. I'm good. It's nice to see you again. Here's the mail. Thanks. And likewise. Hmm. Priority mail from Town Hall. Let's see what they have to say this time. Dear Mr. Harris, on behalf of yada yada yada, concerning Environmental Management Act 1213, yada yada yada, uh, wait, what? <laughs> Listen to this. We have decided to postpone the construction of apartments for at least six months. We hope this satisfies you as well as the many residents of Providence Oaks Let's that start. contacted us with their unfiltered and enthusiastic comments. It worked. The plan worked. Oh, great! So happy for you, Robert. 
We need to celebrate this. Uh, how about tomorrow night? Steak dinner at Moe's. Or something else. On me. Ah, I'd love that. Great. It's gonna be fun. See you tomorrow night. And a few things been Gotta released. Yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. You need to know the assault can be abandoned. Can it really be abandoned, though? They only they only said six months they delayed. I didn't say it's not happening. Right, so I'll have to sign up for Netflix soon. I legit haven't had Netflix since 2020. Last thing I had it for was that uh, Chicago Bulls documentary. All episodes were released on, on Wednesday. Wednesday as in two days from now Wednesday? Yeah, oh, okay. I didn't realize it was this week, I guess. I guess that's why he put that statement out then. I'm calling it a day. This is Meredith saying, fuck this shit. There's a nah. <laughs> I mean, I can watch it at any time. I'm not much of a binge watcher anyway. I know that's funny coming from the guy who's done whole series of stuff at, at times, but in general, I'm not. So. Is this a quiet day, or does it always take this long? Fishing requires patience. We've only been here for two hours. And that's the nice thing about fishing. Yeah, there's a fine line between boredom and relaxation. Nice one. I think I forgot how boredom feels. Fishing also requires silence. Bert, can I ask you a question? Hmm. I have to answer your birthday. <laughs> about life. Life, huh? I'll tell you about it. I know, right, Quinn? So much fishing. When I was young, I joined the Navy. Saw more in oh, one year okay. than anyone should have to see in an entire lifetime. You know what's funny about that, Shed? He said that in 2020, too. And yet, here we are. So, I wouldn't believe a, a damn thing that man says. Hopefully he won't be able to run again, though, because he'll be in prison. But we'll see. Tony Alice 4, when you have a swimming pool, don't use chlorine, use salt water. Don't tell me what to do, DJ God. Or dead? Yeah, that'd be nice too. We ought to be heading back home. It's been a fine day, and I thank you for the company. Wife's Residence, Friday afternoon. Kay's tape. Let's have a listen. Tape sounds. Okay. 
<clears throat> okay. Tall guys got in trouble for saying that. He, he only got in trouble because Jack Black is a pussy. Driving along the highway, <laughs> headlights light up the signs. Boo! Thinking of what might have been. Get off the stage. The radio keeps track of time. Get the table. I mean, the tomatoes. <laughs> Hello? Hi, Meredith. Guess what I signed today? The contracts for the added 87 deal? Oh, yes. You are now talking to Steve Mitchell, CEO of a multi-million dollar enterprise. But before I continue my insufferable bragging, I have a thing or two to say to you, about you. You've been a huge part of the success of this company. And I, I did not this is now. just the beginning. We're entering the golden age of personal computers and... It'll be interesting for sure, tickets. but they're basically the a cult now. weeks have made me realize that I couldn't have done it without you. And I'm going to need you even more in the coming years. So, here's a new monster deal I want you to think about. Become a partner in the company for 20% of the shares and a significant pay raise. Sig... Bro, I've been trying to get fired. <laughs> the only condition is that I need your commitment for the next five years. So, there it is. Think about it, and let's talk about it more when you're back in the office. This is a bit of a surprise. Just let it sink in a bit. I don't need an answer right now. I have to get back to my uh, million-dollar lifestyle. Actually, no, I, I need to get cranking on lots of stuff. Talk soon, Meredith. Tries all game to get fired. Offers me partnership. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, here we go. Good evening, feline friends. Aunt Meredith's going to keep you company tonight. Come here. Kee -kee -kee. Ow. <laughs> gotcha, James. Saturday, September 13th, morning. A postcard from Angie. Miss Meredith, I am so, so sorry I haven't been able to see you. It's just that I've been swamped organizing my not-so-timely exit from Providence Oaks. I'm sure you understand. You've probably seen the foreclosure notice. That certainly helped expedite my decision to leave. Yeah. Anyway, I'll be sure to drop your parents an address when I find a new place to settle down. Hopefully we could grab a coffee at some point. I'd like that. It was really nice getting to know you. I hope you found what you were looking for in Providence Oaks. I know I did. And for me, it wasn't Providence Oaks. Brutal. Your mileage may vary. All the best, Angie. Happy Saturday, everyone. It's time once again for a Kia Positive for that key. Today's verdict is from Cheryl. Hi, Jack. I went for a walk the other day and suddenly encountered a majestic stag. We looked at each other for a few seconds, and, and then he walked off into the woods. Wow, Cheryl. <laughs> I'm glad you could retell the everybody clap. Stags can be dangerous. Today's weather might be dangerous, too. You'll need your raincoat all day long, and there will be a thunderstorm tonight. Back to the music. Back. Wait. Where's the package? It's in. I'm getting it, Meredith. Shut up. Do not be in the hospital for my birthday? Damn. Ah, oh, you're still here, huh? That makes two of us. When are your parents coming back? Actually, they might just stay in Florida. Florida? Your parents? <laughs> What's so funny about that? They'll be back soon. Florida is expensive and honestly isn't all it's cracked up to be. I agree. We'll see what happens. Sunshine and the beach get boring real fast. That well, I disagree with. I better be on my way. So long, Miss Sunshine. Alright, but... 
Why is there a big saw on that? You know, whatever. Like a cake though? Not. Right? Yeah. Here's your mail. That's a nice house. It's the 80s in a country area, so they probably got it for like $200. <laughs> Put a second sign there. Fast car. It's a bit out of place in this area. Fire ass blue mailbox over here. I think I couldn't eat or drink all mm, one of them. I got you. I had to do that before I had surgery. Also, I remember the crazy thing they told me about surgery before the surgery. They're like, you, you can't get sick or they call it off. I'm like, bitch, I can't control whether I get sick or not. I was afraid I was going to get sick because I had to wake up at 5 in the morning. And I was fucking had insomnia as it is. So I only slept like three hours. Collins, let me see.
Hold on, I cut off the rest of the link, so I need to highlight it. Oh, sick. Oh, I, I've sexy. I've had something similar to this. Don't entirely remember when, but that that activated a memory in me. False. A double stop that resulted in the yellow? Holy shit. Uh oh, it's the police! When this kind of comps? Bro, being a cop around here must be the easiest fucking job in the world. There's a high percentage that whoever that cop is, he weighs like 350 pounds. Okay, fellow it's stuck around for long time. It's time once again for the sent in letters and announcements. This one's from our very own Maureen, or Mo, as we all know. Hey, folks. Just wanted to grab your ears for a second to let you know all about the upcoming open mic night over at Mo's Diner this Sunday. That's right. Claim your 15 minutes of fame, enjoy some whale performances, and the usual good food and drinks for everyone. I expect to see all of y'all for a great evening. And maybe even some dancing. You know who you are. Come join the show at Moe's at 8 p.m. this Sunday. I'll come get you if you don't. Well, you heard her, folks. And I'll be there, too, so you better not miss it. Marines Back to alert. music and to one of my favorite songs. Mail Carrier Meredith. Farmer DJ Jack. Seen any ghost drivers on the way here? Nope. Are you sure? Yes, why? Okay, I was just wondering. <laughs> Don't bother. I need to get back to the live show. See you tomorrow, I reckon. Bye now. Uh, bye, Jack. Oh, and please close the door. Don't want to broadcast any mail truck noise. Thank you much. Man, you going to negatives on the Wheel of North proportions? Oof. I don't think I'd be able to place what I put. That's place we did two wheel. Oh yeah, I hit the side of it. I'm gonna miss it because um, uh, uh, I'm gonna be out. But if anybody's interested, there's a PlayStation thing tomorrow. I think around 11 p.m. your guys' time.
Watch, they're gonna have some really cool shit like fucking Ghost of Tsushima 2 or something. I saw that about the libraries later. Are they putting the NXT library on the CW app? Oh shit. Yeah, okay. And then Raw's library is probably going to Netflix? If they're navigating off Peacock already, that makes me think that when the Peacock deals up, they're probably going to Netflix for the pay-per-view. And for the network. I'm busy. Aren't we all? No! Damn it! I almost had it! I almost fucking had it. Whoa! Thanks for breaking my concentration. There was a slur in this game? Holy shit. <laughs> You're welcome. <sighs> Video games are supposed to be fun. I feel horrible. Absolutely horrible. I know there's an F bomb in this game. Maybe you should try a different hobby. You know what? I can beat this damn game, and I'm not quitting until I have. Okay. Mm I thought this is a family friendly game. Cursing in my fucking late game? Unbelievable. There you go, sir. Gotcha, Well, yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, it, it also does make me think that they're not gonna renew it. But maybe they will. I don't know. Cause they really did strengthen the, um, the NBC deal. Because now they're doing like the specials, the Friday, the Saturday Night Main Events on NBC. So I really don't know. To be honest, I'd rather it be on Netflix and Peacock if, I, if I'm talking about you know personal preference, just because I think Netflix is the better platform. But we shall see. Definitely not gonna get murdered out here. I'm gonna have to get fire watch for some reason. Blog off Netflix over here? I think it will. I think that's what they said. Which way are we going? We're going left. Right.
Hopefully the replays are available soon. Well, we'll see about that. But I hope so too. There we go. Burn a main event in there if they want. Reading people's mail, Meredith. Pretty sure it's literally a felony. <laughs> Back at one point. Okay. So that might be about what they do regularly, then. Obviously, a huge drop from when they're on Fox, but it's still not bad. Especially for Friday night. They'll probably still outdraw Raw. Raw's probably gonna do less than that this week, I'd imagine. And so ends a week full of turmoil. Are you happy it's over? Only the Angels haven't lost to the White Sox. That would have made it perfect. That's actually really funny because I think the Angels play the White Sox tomorrow. <laughs> Never underestimate White Sox. They're playing each other again tonight. Should I change the bet? Nope. Hold the line. Okay. Let's see what happens. Maybe you're my lucky charm. Have a great weekend, Meredith. Oh, wait. This was your last day. I totally forgot to tell you that they still haven't found someone else for the job. So, I guess... Very true, I do. Wow. Sounds quite nice, actually. Of course. And it's a great job. You know what? Think about it, and let me know Monday morning when you return your stuff. Gonna run now. Red Sox are playing the Yankees. Why is resident Saturday? You your time in the mail delivery business oh hi dad well i actually really loved it awesome maybe you should just keep doing it worked out well for me actually it seems like they haven't filled the vacancy yet they haven't well you know what i'd do oh hold on meredith well, let me guess mom wants to talk to me hi meredith sorry to butt in but you're thinking about staying in Providence Oaks? Hi, Mom. Well, yeah, why not? I like it here. Well, P.O. is wonderful, of course. I know. But you've got so much going on. Do you want to leave all that behind? Yeah, I guess that's what it comes down to. Is it just work-related, or are there other people involved? You know, any interesting, interesting ones, perhaps? 
Well, there are some interesting developments, yes. Oh, there are. But are they really interesting enough to give up your entire career? I really think you need to think long and hard on it. Oh, hold on. I have a suspicion Dad wants to talk to me. Meredith, I just wanted to say, you need to clean the lint filter on the dryer every once in a while. <laughs> it could burn the house down. No problem, Dad. I'll make sure to do that. Great, thanks. I sometimes suddenly worry He's about spitting, things though. like that in the middle of the night. And it's not about the dryer, of course. I want you to be safe. And I'm sure you'll be okay. Every once in a while. I do it after every time, but... I'll tell the dryer that he's on your mind. <sighs> Thanks. And could you also pet him on his back every now and then? He likes that. What? Oh, running out of coins. Gotta go. Bye, Em. Take care. I hope you don't think I'm a cheapskate for having dinner here. There aren't a lot of other restaurants around, and I'm pretty sure their food isn't better than most. Is there any other restaurants around? It, <laughs> I love it here. Thanks, Meredith. You're such a kind person. Good evening, you two beautiful people. Ready to order? Ladies first. Hi, Maureen. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's hard to pass up a juicy T-bone steak. Excellent choice, Meredith. And what would you like to wash it down with? Penis. Uh, I think I'll have a... Glass of wine. Gotcha, Robert. The usual for me, Maureen. All right, Robert. T-bone steak and a beer. Doesn't get any more lumberjack than that. Be right back, folks. Ashley, get the steaks out. Maureen's the best. Did you hear about the open mic night she's organizing? Yeah. Are you going? I wish I could go, especially since I heard that Jack's going to do a thing. Jack? What's he going to do? give a lecture about potatoes believe it or not he's a very good ballet dancer <laughs> yeah right and you're his stage manager <laughs> no he's into comedy would have loved to peckle him oh well this is a good week anyhow because you're sitting here with me all righty here are good your line. beverages folks I'm afraid the food might take a little longer. As a certain kitchen helper thought the freezer was a good place for storing steaks. Uh, I really should get one of those microwave ovens to defrost them. Bruh. You seem a little stressed. Is it the upcoming open mic? Why should I be stressed about that? It's going to be lovely. And you better be there, Robert Harris. Maureen, I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I won't be able to make it. I did not just hear you say that, young man. Oh, by the way, Meredith. I need to steal him for two minutes. He needs to check on some wiring for me. Excuse me, Meredith. This is Maureen's jurisdiction. Have to obey the law. Mmm, that tasted so good. Thanks, Maureen, for the fantastic blueberry pie. You're welcome. It's my way of making up for stealing you away from Meredith. Oof, I swear. She can give quite the stink eye if she wants, can't you, hon? <laughs> oh, boy. The world would be boring without her. Speaking of, are you going to miss your daily delivery round? It depends on who's on the round. Oh, anyone in particular you don't like? It's not right to gossip. But Matt Kearney is a piece of work. Ah, uh, yes, that's sorry excuse for a human being. <laughs> I've had fantasies of mistaking him for a tree. <laughs> oh, well, small towns. Can't like everyone. God damn. Can't avoid them either. Do you think you'll always live here? Nothing's for sure, but I like it here. I needed to change towns after my divorce. Everything and everyone reminded me of her. And how are you now? Have you gotten over it? Maybe I shouldn't bother you with the innermost feelings of a lumberjack. Such a no. Wouldn't be a bother at all. Robert and Meredith, sorry to break up your conversation, but we're closing up early tonight. Gotta set up some stuff for the open mic night, and I can't use any peeping eyes. Oh, okay, Maureen. No problem. Let me get the check for you, so I can leave you two to your lovely evening. Can you put it on my tab, Maureen? Anything for you, darling. Thanks, 
Thanks, Robert. Don't mention it. You've helped me out so much. This is nothing compared to that. Now let's get going before Maureen gets her broom out. <laughs> Meredith, thanks again for your help. I'm not sure what would have happened if you hadn't come here for your mail delivery vacation. I might actually extend my stay here. Are you serious? That would be nice. So, I guess I'll see you around. Yeah. Okay. All right. Wagon West. Good night, Meredith. You too, Robert. But you're not leaving without a hug. Well. Sunday, September 14th morning. I never predicted delivering mail for two weeks would be like this. Met so many new people. Some of them are really nice. Some of them suck. Uh, some of them a little less so. But all of them interesting in their own way. My temporary mail job officially ends tomorrow. Regardless of the actual experience, changing scenery is always has its upsides. Probably also holds true for tonight's open mic night at Moe's Diner. <laughs> anyway, I love this town. You know I do. So, I'm dedicating my last jokes to specific people here tonight. The first one's for Maureen. A guy walks into a bar, and dozens of slabs of meat are hanging from the ceiling. So he asks the bartender. What's up with the hanging meat up there, man? So the bartender says, Ah, you're new here. Well, we like to play a game here. If you can jump up and slap a steak, the house will pay for your drinks all night. However, if you miss, you have to pay everyone else's bar tab. So, want to give it a go? Nah, says the man. <laughs> Those steaks are too high. Oh! This one's for our own newcomer, Meredith Weiss. So, a woman's <laughs> driving down the freeway. But all of a sudden, she hears a local news bulletin warning drivers on the very freeway she's on. They're saying, please be advised of this very dangerous situation of a car going the wrong way. So the woman says to herself, what car? <laughs> Why, there's dozens. Well. Well, folks, wasn't that special? Get the tomatoes. Now, let me know if any of you have any jokes about Jack, you hear? It's an open mic after all. It's actually time for a little break right now. So come on up to the bar for some of our finest concessions. We'll continue shortly. Mildred, how are you? And how are the cats? Fine, on both counts, dear. Thank you for asking. So, do you like the hair? Love it. That hairdresser did a great job. Thank you, dear. Pity it's quite the waste of time and money, seeing as how I can't stay for long. Really? What's the rush? You see, my son decided to drop by unannounced, oh. and he's staying the whole weekend. Oh, that's wonderful news. Mm hmm. All right. Well, anyway, take care, dear. Now, where did he park the car? Yes, it's me, Matt Kearney, in an egg brace. Real funny, huh? I must admit, it, it's at least a little funny. Mm. What happened? Well, I was about to send the final boss, the afterlife, but then the computer crashed. I kicked my foot out in anger and fell from my chair. Ah. Now I'm here looking like a loser. Oh, poor you. I hope you'll be okay again soon. I hope so. I can't even use my computer right now. Dear people, none other than our own Kay Evans will perform next. Please, she God, has no. been writing songs since she was a little girl. And I cannot say how thrilled I am. Somebody refill the tomatoes. Performance of hopefully many to come. I am so 
proud of you, honey. Please, put your hands together for Kay, everyone! Isn't that bad? I pulled up to a crossroads. But get the tomatoes anyway. I changed my mind again. This sucks. Get the tomato. <laughs> There we go. Chance for every break you get, you leave another one behind. Just as a long Marine's like, how do I tell her that she can't say? Thank you. That was it. Darling, this does not happen a lot, but you have left me. Speechless. That's how shit you are. people. Another round of applause. No. Well, it's a good thing I didn't leave when Reynolds started his nonsense. This kid can sing. No, she cannot. Oh, hi, Mr. Mackey. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah, it's good to see someone flourish. But I'd rather be home right now. The fucking mic fell on my space bar, but it made me lie. <laughs> Isn't it fun to step out every once in a while? Smoking a pipe and reading a proper book is the only acceptable way to spend a Sunday evening in September. Bert, thank you so much for coming. I know you'd rather be somewhere else right now. That's okay, kid. I don't regret it one bit. You did great. But ladies... If you'll excuse me, I'm out of here. Fuck this noise. Good night, Bert. Thanks again. And now for an announcement. I'm serious, so hush now. Now, you all know that Kay has been working here at the diner for quite a while now. In fact, she was my anchor after Stan left us. And I think the time has come to formally announce right here that I will put your name above the door of this place, honey, where it belongs. Case place. Mo case. We haven't settled on a name yet, but there you go. Another round of applause. And have some drinks with us. Oh, is she Jeb Bush? Please clap. <laughs> case place, huh? Congratulations. That was quite a surprise. Yeah, I told you. Mo asked me, like, a gazillion times, right? Kind of felt right this time. We haven't hashed out any details, as you might have noticed. <laughs> but it feels good, you know? I have to hand it to you. You were great. I have to go in a bit, but let me know when the next gig is, yeah? You're not leaving already, are you? The fun's just starting. Oh, wait. Of course. Big day tomorrow, right? You know what you're going to do? Honestly? Well... Wait, I'm not good at this stuff, so I just want to say it was good to have you back these past weeks, and really good. You just do what you feel you have to do. I'm just glad we reconnected. I promise you'll keep in touch, whatever the outcome, yeah? Of course! And remember, time marches, marches on. on. <laughs> See ya, Kay. Oh. Thanks. For everything. Fuck time. My lovely people. Ah. The time has come for the open mic part of the evening to end. Ashley was up, yeah, going she... to do a ventriloquist bit next. But I just heard he hurt his hand back in his cabin. Let me thank you again for joining us. And there's plenty of food and drink to go around. Imagine her bushering Metallica. Raj Vampire's Kiss. Oh, nice. I sure do hope they're keeping things proper in there while I'm taking a breather. Well, there's Frank so, looking at me for the window. <laughs> it was okay. You sound a bit pensive, darling. I'm still thinking about your news about handing over the diner. Case place, huh? 
That was quite the bombshell. That's my style. I've mentioned it to Kay, yes, many times since Stan died. She probably thought I was joking half the time, honestly. I just want to give her the option. It's hers whenever she wants it. And if she doesn't, that's fine too. Yeah, but how do you make a choice like that if you don't even know what your own situation will end up looking like? Something on your mind, hon? No, I'm fine, honestly. Big day tomorrow is all. How did things end up with Kay? You could tell me to mind my own, of course. It's just that that girl is like a daughter to me. We talked, yeah. We really reconnected. And I'm happy we did. <laughs> Listen, you're two grown women. And if that's the choice you two ended up on, I can only respect that. Speaking of choices, you've got a big day in the morning, don't you? I already mentioned Know what it. you're going to do yet? Stick around, move back. Absolutely. Not a speck of doubt. Well then, Miss Wise, a, I salute B, C, your D, resolve. E, F, G. Thanks, Maureen. I best get back inside. You take care now, Meredith Wise. Take care, Maureen. Monday, September 15th, morning. Dear Meredith Weiss, thank you for participating in our annual photography contest. Your wonderful picture did not win the grand prize, Bo. but you are still a winner. The attached voucher gives you a 20% discount to our autumn course. Sick! <laughs> Sign up today and never take a blurry picture again. David Gillespie, Photography for Beginners, Inc. Good morning, Meredith. Ah. You won't believe the weekend I had. Saturday, I placed a bet on the Angels, just like you said, and won. But they played again yesterday, and I let it ride, and then they lost. They're playing again tonight, and now I don't know what to do anymore. Well, Frank, the pattern is obvious. You're a gambling addict beyond salvation. <laughs> <laughs> Meredith, I guess you're right. And I guess I don't mind. Speaking of gambling, I bet you're taking the job. And that's not just because you're wearing your coat. I love the coat, Frank. And yes, I want to wear it a bit longer. Fantastic. So you'll be delivering the mail today? I'll give HR a call and tell them the vacancy is filled. Eh, uh, not so fast, Frank. It's under one condition. If you get in a predicament with Walter Morgan again, you're on your own. Ha, <laughs> you got it. I'll have Morgan for breakfast. Now, let's get to work. The mail doesn't deliver itself. Okay, let's see what today's weather Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> oh, God. Whoa, holy shit! Whoa! <laughs> and I can't wait to go outside and head out to the acres. But not before sharing, you know what? P.O. Positive or Pet P. Freaked out a bit there. I don't need callers for today's P.O. Positive. I'm picking it myself. <laughs> I'm talking about Moe's open mic last night. Uh, I hope y'all enjoyed it as much as I did. I did not, and you I'm suck. sorry if I offended anyone with my jokes. Well, no, actually, I am not sorry. <laughs> not sorry at all. Thank you much, Mo and Kate. It was offensive how bad they were. It's just one of the things that makes Providence Oaks the best place in the world. Have a great day. Oh. What's this guy up to? Wait, is that Robert? Y yeah, yeah, Robert, I'll pull over. Hey, Meredith, sorry about that. I hope it didn't scare you. Hey, Robert. What's going on? Well, this is going to sound super awkward and hopeless and desperate and probably a lot more things, but I don't want you to leave. I've decided a while ago that I'm done with stuff like this, but I guess it's not something you can decide. Robert, that's so sweet of you, but I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, I figured you'd say that. I'm... Wait, what? 
You're not going? Yep. It's nice here. Oh, wow. Uh, okay, great. Well, I might as well blurt it all out. I like you. A lot. And I didn't want to give in to it. I've been through a rough breakup once, and I didn't want to risk ever feeling like that again. So, what do you propose? That I just get in your car right now? Uh, I wasn't gonna propose, but yeah, Meredith, I'd love that. Okay. Bet. Told you we're going to Lumberjack this time. Oh, wow, well, let's go. Oh, yeah. Coffee at Moe's? And a piece of pie. First day full time on the job, abandons the job. <laughs> Sorry for button in, folks, but I've got a special treat for y'all. I just updated my playlist. Bruh. This new song is from our very own KM. No! <laughs> When wedding, I'll be in Lake too. Electric food alert. Okay, so we'll probably replay season's greetings around um around December. Uh, da -da -da -da. okay. Like I said, this will be a unique wheel spin because if we get my new controller hasn't been delivered yet, so if we get anything with a controller, we're gonna respin. That works. Let's open uh, up Epic, because that's what I have this on. What is the free game right now, I wonder? Is it still the Rugrats, or did they move on? Actually, I haven't checked in a bit. Uh-oh, it's taking a bit to load. That usually means the launcher needs an update. What the heck is Frostpunk? Whatever it is, it just got a sequel. Three games right now are Toem and The Last Stand Aftermath. No idea what Ivor does there. The next free game is The Spirit and the Mouse. Never, yeah, me neither. Yeah. 
It's been several weeks since the club has officially started. For the, their initial step backs, the three club members so far, Monica, Sayori, and Yuri, have increased their collective bond within the club. Sayori has partaken in some of Yuri's high fantasy literature, and all of them, led by Sayori, have taken an interest in poetry. On a day like any other, the three find themselves suddenly interrupted by the club room door opening. And a girl walks in that none of them have seen before. Hi! Sayori tugs excitedly on Monica's sleeve. Yuri shifts in her seat and buries her eyes in her book. Are you here for the literature club? Yeah. Yay, that's great. Thanks for stopping by. It's kind of a small club still, so it's really exciting to see new faces. Yeah. Come and sit down somewhere. You, you can sit uh, next to my desk. What's up, Will? Sayori prances over to the desk and presses her palms onto it. Oh, and Yuri can make you some tea. Uh, uh, Yuri looks up at Sayori and protests her having drawn attention to her. Atsuki silently glances between everyone, then sits down next to Sayori. Monica follows by sitting nearby. The sudden gathering prompts Yuri to stand up, deciding that standing in the corner and making tea doesn't sound so bad after all. <laughs> okay, how about we introduce ourselves? Okay. Well, I'm Monica, the one who started the club. I was originally in the debate club, but... I really want to do something I felt more passionate about, if that makes sense. So I started a literature club as a way for people to express themselves through writing or reading, or whatever kind of whatever kind of literature. You know, I, I figured this was your club. You have that vibe. Aha, I have what vibe? Oh, you know, like... Never mind. I'm not gonna judge people, I just bet like that. But there you don't like of you. What's up, John? I always judge people so hard. Oh, no, you don't, Sayori. Yes, yeah, she does. Yes, yeah, she does. Yuri's deadpan voice carries across the classroom. Natsuki giggles. I'm Sayori. I, I just like learning about everyone and making friends. Oh, and I also like poetry. Oh, yeah? Very adult-like of you. <laughs> I'm an adult. The sound of uh, Yuri's electric kettle steaming up fills the room. Oh, that's Yuri. Sayori lowers voice. She's kind of shy, but she's really nice and super smart. She likes big fantasy books and tea. I love her. Well, I guess that leaves me then. I'm Natsuki. I like listening to music and hanging out downtown and stuff. My favorite ice cream flavor is strawberry. Ooh, let's get ice cream. My favorite flavor is probably... Uh, cookie dough? Or maybe chocolate? It's cookie dough. Monica's is... Probably, uh, probably vanilla. What the heck? I take way too many online classes. The ice cream ones are always accurate. What's your favorite? Asuki shrugs. Uh, probably green tea. <laughs> I'm just joking. I have no idea for Yuri. Still. It's pretty chill here. Do you just, like, hang out, or do you actually do club stuff? Ah, oh, well, I do club stuff, too. It hasn't been very structured yet, since we only have three members, so we kind of just loosely spend our time doing stuff we like. I can't think it's about time we start with, like, some more structured club activities. It's been a while by now since I started a club, so yeah. That being said, what kind of literature are you into, Mitsuki? Anything you'd like to get the club into? What does Plus version have? This. These are side stories that tell about uh, how the club formed before the main character joined. Uh, well, I guess I'm... Literature... Uh, well, I like manga. Manga? Hey, why do you say it like that? <laughs> I want to read manga in the club. Wait, hold on a second. That sounds so great. After all, I've been doing this, um... He returns desk to the tray of teacups, which he sets down on an empty desk. After all the deep and immersive reading I've been doing, well, am I doing something a little more simple? Manga isn't simple. Like that, you just don't understand the nuance. Uh, I didn't mean simple like that. Well, anyway. Is books in the literature club? Yeah, there's a bookshelf in the back. How are you, Jimbo? Putting manga aside, is there any other kind of literature you're interested in? Well, not really. In that case, you consider the anime club? <laughs> are you serious? I'm not gonna join the anime club. It's full of bitch, I mean, weird guys. Come on, is that big of a deal? Manga's literature, right? Um, I mean, I guess if you consider the literal definition of literature, then technically, 
I get it. Look, do whatever club activities you want. Can I please just join? Don't bother anyone. I can just like keep my manga here and hang out after school. I'll do literally whatever you want me to do. That's fine, right? Yeah, I guess there's nothing wrong with that. Oh my god, thank you. You're the best. I have most of the crane in my locker, so I'm gonna start getting it, okay? The Siggy stands up. Uh, you need some help? Nah, I got it. I don't want you to see my locker. <sighs> you say so, but there's no way it's worse than mine. But we never find out then. The Siggy exits the club room, leaving everyone in silence, save for the sound of Yuri sipping her tea. Tired, but less tired than expected. Gosh. Ugh, I'm such a pushover. I think it's not that bad. I think it seems like a lot of fun. Maybe, but I mean, she has like no actual interest in literature, you know? And that's normally fine, but she said she would participate in club activities like it's some sort of obligation. The tea's gonna get cold. Yeah! Wait, that's not related. <laughs> well, I think everyone deserves a chance. Especially if we can bring her happiness. Besides, maybe she'll take a liking to literature. You sure you just don't want to read her manga, Sayori? Hey, who do you think I am? Sorry, I didn't mean it like that. I feel really uneasy about this. You have any opinion, Yuri? Not particularly. She said she wasn't going to bother anyone. That includes me, so... Does that mean I bother you? Uh, no, your pleasure to be around. Eh, I was just fishing for a compliment. I know. But still, I don't think we should give her a chance. You anime animes? Do you like? Do you watch them? Uh, occasionally. I, I've I've seen some. I haven't watched one in a very long time. I I think all all the animes I've watched too would be considered decently mainstream as well. Like I'm not I'm not like an in the trenches weeb or anything. Yeah, all right. But I really am going to start enforcing club activities. I'm willing to cooperate. Suddenly, the three of them hear a thump against the door. Who's that? Fairy steps, stands up, and walks over the door and opens it. Uh, thank you. Carrying three boxes of what presumably manga, and Suki grunts and wobbles inside before slowly bending over and dropping the stack onto the floor as gently as she can. That's quite a collection. Fairy giggles in excitement. While catching her breath, and Suki replies, There's still one more box. I can put them away. Myself. I know how to organize them. Monica anxiously glances between Sayori and Yuri. Is this really okay for the club? Bunch of fucking weebs? <laughs> Maybe it's what she really needs to kick club into gear before everyone gets too complacent. It looks like things- seems like things are finally gonna start getting more serious. At the next club meeting, Monica is the first to arrive. Ever since Natsuki joined, she feels a lot less relaxed. Why am I so nervous? Monica paces, trying to figure out her feelings. Natsuki said she wasn't going to bother anyone. Why does it feel like the atmosphere has changed so much? While Monica thinks, the club door opens, revealing Natsuki carrying a box. Monica forces a smile as Natsuki makes her way into the closet. Natsuki forces one in return. Need help? Uh, now I got it! Monica awkwardly tries to start some sort of conversation, but fails. Curious, she peeks in the closet where Natsuki is stashing over manga. Once stole school supplies, the shelves are now vibrant with uh, bright colors and cute looking artwork. Uh, the top shelf's pretty uh, empty. Maybe we can keep it up there. I can't reach up there! That'd be so inconvenient. Yeah, but. Monica sighs. The teacher's gonna ask what all the manga's doing here, and I have to tell them it's for the literature club. So? Monica backs off and slumps into a desk. That's kind of tension. Feels like the relaxed atmosphere accumulated over the past few weeks is being sucked right out of the room. Good afternoon! <laughs> Sari spins in the club room. Oh, I see someone's in a good mood. Yeah, uh, because I have this! Sari branches a cookie wrapped in plastic. I found some money, I got a cookie! Ooh, that's so pretty. As Sayori uh, trots over to the closet, the colorful shelves catch her eye. Which one do I start with? Well, you can start by giving me a bite of that cookie. No way! Say I don't my luck to, f to find that money. 
If you want entry in my kingdom, you have to pay the tax, peasant. Boo. Defeated Sayori on Rats or Cookie and breaks off peace for Natsuki. Then Yuri. Then, Yuri silently walks in the club. Monica glances at her with pleading eyes. Yuri re returns a quick nod of understanding. Well, everyone's here now. Despite the club only having one more person than before, somehow it feels twice as lively. Okay, so I think we should go over some potential club activities and see which one we want to do first. We have four members now, so it'd be great if we found some stuff to do as a group. That sound good, everyone? I agree. Okay, so I have some ideas of my own, but I want to hear your ideas too. I've been having a lot of fun uh, learning about everyone else's interests. Maybe we give every person a, a day to share their favorite kind of literature with everyone else. Well, maybe. <laughs> Something tells me that... Monica glances at Yuri and Atsuki, who b both uh, appear very unwilling to even consider each other's interests. Maybe we could try to come up with something that everyone can equally enjoy. You know, like we all vote on a book to read, or something like that. I think we can all collectively try to expand our interests, uh, rather than just stick uh, to things we're familiar with. I feel like I'm being targeted here. Atsuki, didn't you say you'd go along with whatever the club wanted to do? Yeah, but it doesn't make it okay for you to ignore everyone else's preferences. Like Sayori suggested. Yeah, me too. Yeah, but... Mm. Monica's voice trails off. While she let Natsuki join a club, Monica finds it incredibly difficult to relent to her demands. Natsuki doesn't respect the club. Why should Monica have to yield to Natsuki's opinion on anything? Why doesn't Monica just kill Yatsuki? <laughs> Natsuki, are you sure you don't have any of her literature interests you could share with the club? I swear I don't mind if you keep your manga in here, but it's just... I just... Asuki cuts Monica off by suddenly standing up. Well, it's obvious I'm not one here, so I'm just gonna leave. I really would have appreciated you being more upfront about it. Okay, I think you're kind of jumping to conclusions here, but feel free to do whatever you want. Asuki shoots Monica a quick glare before walking straight out of the room. Oh no. Sarah runs after her, leaving just Yuri and Monica. For a second time today, Monica slumps down to a desk. Why am I such a jerk? No, she's a jerk. She's making me feel this way. Monica looks at Yuri, seeking affirmation. Yuri looks away. Probably just once went around looking for the smartest, smallest club she could find so that she doesn't have to participate. How does she expect to give me respect when she has no respect for the club? Am I wrong, Yuri? I'm, I'm not... I'm not good at these things. Monica sighs. Me neither. I just have no idea what to do. I don't want to hurt anyone, but it feels like it's not wrong to enforce the club vision. You know, like, people should join because they want to express their passion for literature, or at least develop it. So maybe she's not a good fit for the club after all. Monica sits in silence, afraid to accept her tentative conclusion. Yuri looks tense, but she doesn't want to seem to add anything, because she's a pussy. You can, sorry, you can go back to reading. I know this doesn't concern you. It does. It does? How? Well, I just can't comfortably read in an atmosphere where the peace has been disturbed. Oh! Well, great, I'm just ruining the whole club then. Just fuck me! Fuck Monica! <laughs> That's not an accurate conclusion to make. I know, I'm sorry. I'm just kind of voicing my frustration, then I guess guilt. It's like my frustration wants to blame her, but my guilt wants to blame me. Ugh, why is it hardest to be rational during the times when you need it the most? That's a mood. I don't think you're being irrational. I think Natsuki is. She has no authority to walk in here and make demands at the club. Your club. Something as ridiculous as Monica, as, as manga, has no place here. The fact you're even uh, storing it for her should make it comfortably and make her comfortably indebted to you. Oh, you're right, but I don't know. Isn't it kind of harsh to say things like it's ridiculous and has no place here? Do you not feel the same way? You've been doing everything you can to avoid associating the club with it. So I assumed you felt the same way about it. That's not true. Well, recalling your conversations with Natsuki, a realization had started to set in. Hmm. You, you might be right. I mean, if there's anything besides manga, would I really be acting like this? Maybe I'm just convincing myself that it has nothing to do with the manga. I'm really upset that I let myself do that. With sigh, Monica walks over to the closet. Finds herself staring at the colorful shelves. It's just... This isn't really what I had in mind for a club about literature. There, should, there shouldn't be anything wrong with that. Monica starts defending her position once again. It's a complicated issue that Monica has failed to consider before now. 
Where is the line even drawn at what's considered literature? Lost in thought, she reaches into one of the larger box sets and pulls out a volume, inspecting it for no particular reason. The cover features four girls striking cute and exaggerated poses, all dressed in short skirts. Yeah, I mean... Amused by the absurdity of the cover, Monica opens the book. Part 2. That sucks. Why is Monica such a jerk? She'd be grateful I even joined her stupid club. Not like she can find any members. Uh, Monica's usually really nice. She cares so much about everyone in the club being happy. Yeah, right. Well, she usually does. Maybe she's not busy being so judgmental. So what if I'm in a manga? Why can't one person just accept that instead of being so condescending about it? I, I accept it. I think it's cute. Oh, come on. That's condescending too. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that. I just want to support you. Masuki sighs. I know, thanks. It's just, it really sucks. You want me to talk to Monica? I don't know. I feel like it's gonna change your opinion of me. Like, even if you were convinced her to back off, it wouldn't suddenly make me feel like I'm actually welcome in a club. I should just find another club. Wait, you don't have to do that. We can figure this out, please. I mean, I'm the vice president, or at least I think I am. I don't want you to leave. Everyone deserves to feel welcome and to be happy, so I want to make that happen. For you. Um, I was wondering. What was the reason you decided to join the literature club? Well... Nasuki hesitates. It's kind of dumb. No, I don't say that. There's no such thing as a dumb reason when everyone is welcome. I wasn't welcome. You were to me! So... Just don't tell anyone, okay? Especially Monica. I promise. Nasuki sighs. I'm just... I'm tired of everyone judging me all the time. I can't enjoy any of the stuff I'm into. I feel people making snotty comments about it. I don't care what anyone else thinks. But you know, the signs for the literature club said you can be yourself or whatever. So I decided it was at least worth a shot. That was a lie, apparently. Natsuki dejectedly kicks the toe of her shoe against the wall. Oh, and I like writing, too. Really? I can't even say that to Monica. Because! What's up, Josh? She was so judgmental that I didn't. I just wanted to tell her something she wanted to hear. She didn't deserve that kind of satisfaction. And if she knew I was in her writing, then she would just be like everyone else and try to push me away from the manga. If they were a more mature thing. Mm -hmm. The two of them remained silent for a while. Sarah understands the sadly question for Natsuki to return to the club room for today, at least. Natsuki has a reason for when joining the club, just like everyone else. It's part of the club vision for her to be welcome. You deserve to express yourself as much as everyone else does. That's supposed to be what the club is for. So... I'm gonna do everything I can to fix this. I promise. It's lunchtime the next day. The cafeteria and hallways are always bustling with students rushing to meet with their friends and make the most out of their limited break time. Where could she be? Among them is Monica, who eats lunch in her classroom, but she has some additional business today. Though Natsuki uh, would avoid coming to the club, Monica decided to try to find her during lunch so she could make amends. After searching for an expensive time, Monica finally spots her. Despite her short statue, despite her uh, short stature, I'm sorry, Natsuki's bright hair helps her stand out in the crowd. Oh gosh. Suddenly feeling awkward, Monica is afraid to get closer. Suki is with some friends who Monica doesn't recognize, and they're all energetically chatting together. But you're really tactless just to interrupt them. Oh yeah, did you end up joining that literature club, or what? Ah, uh, oh, of course I joined. Why wouldn't I? Ah, I told you she would join. Ah, come on. You know she only joined because you wouldn't stop giving her crap about the anime club. I told you, I never wanted to join this stupid club. Oh, sure. Maybe you're some crap, or at least make an effort to grow past that trash. Ah, true. Well, congrats on finally graduating middle school, Natsuki. We're proud of you. Just shut up. Just let me do my thing. Just joking. You know we love you. Yeah, these friends suck. That's why they're... That's why they don't have actual faces. <laughs> yeah, once the Ledger Club makes you a famous writer, we'll be the first ones to buy your book. Just waiting at the hospital to come up for... Oh, I hope everything's okay. What, you gonna buy her smutty fanfiction? 
<laughs> well, obviously, I want to sign copy. That was like years ago. I don't think I've grown out of that by now. I told you I was joking. Besides, it's a good reminder of how far you've come since then. I didn't mention you couldn't have done it without us. That gives us a, a past joke about it. Yeah, sure. They grew up so fast, it brings a tear to my eye. Atsuki suddenly glances in Monica's direction, prompting Monica to quickly turn and distance herself. What the heck? That was horrible. Should have said something to defend her. Why do I have to be so conflict avoidant? Not that I deserve to say anything. Hardly better than them after the way I treated her. Ugh, I'm so awful. I'm not doing anything right. After school ends, Monica distractedly makes her way to the club room. My second year gun fight? Oh, damn. She finds Yuri already inside, eyes on a book as usual. Monica picks a desk and slumps into it, something she seems to be doing rather often lately. Yuri, I don't think I can, I can be club president. I suck at handling anything that doesn't go, like, exactly my way. Yuri looks up from her book. It's like the literature club is a place where you get to express yourself. That's just in a way that I don't like. I'm so mad at myself. Especially mad enough for self-reflection skills to realize what I was doing. So much for maturity. So I really shouldn't be complaining out loud like this. Just it's a lot of my mind. No. Oh. Hmm? I enjoy listening. Really? Mm-hmm. Why? Yuri shrugs. It just makes me feel nice. Oh, well, okay, well, I guess I'll continue then. Yuri nods. Yeah. It's just, well... Natsuki has kind of a blunt attitude, you know? Makes me feel like she wasn't taking the club seriously. I couldn't figure out why she wanted to join. Uh, I saw her friends talking to her in the club room in the hallway during lunch, and they were just so mean to her. Telling her she had to grow up and stuff like that. The literature club would help her grow out of her manga. It just made me so mad. Like, just let her enjoy it. it. Makes her happy. Why are you trying to take that away from her? And when I had that thought, I came to the realization that I was just kind of doing the same thing. Just in a roundabout way. I shouldn't have made her feel... Uh, I, I should have made her feel good about being passionate on something. But I just dismissed it. I was actually trying to avoid acknowledging it at all. I did that with you, Yuri, when you first joined the club. You you did? Yeah, I remember. Fantasy isn't really my thing, so I was kind of trying to dismiss it, but then Sayori jumped in and took over the conversation. I should have reflected on that, but I didn't. Because I just let Sayori handle it instead. Now I'm repeating the same mistake, except I really hurt someone this time. Monica shakes her head. I'm so tired of being afraid of things I'm not comfortable with. It's so stupid. I can, I, I can just picture how much joy it would bring Natsuki if I let her share her passion a little. I'm so angry that her friends were treating her like that. I'm gonna get them back for it. I'm gonna fucking kill them. <laughs> get, get them back? Yeah. I'll get them back. By making sure that this ledger club that Natsuki... That, this is the literature club that Nsuki wants, not the one that they want. Suddenly, Sayori bursts through the door, making Monica and Yuri jump. With a rare, stern face, she marches over to Monica's desk and sits down next to her. I'm having an intervention! I can do that because I'm vice president! Is this about Natsuki? Yes! Yeah, I know. I messed up. I'm super sorry. I was talking to Yuri about it. Really? I was so dismissive of her passion that I felt threatened. I was so dismissive of her passion that she felt threatened and probably just unwelcome. Literally the opposite of what the literature club's supposed to be. I really need to make it up to her. Oh! Yay, I did it! Ha ha ha! Big 30 intervention, Sayori. Glad we're on the same page. Friendship wins again. So, how do you want to make it up to her? I have a plan. Sayori, you know if Ansuki's coming to the club meeting today? She's... I don't think she is. I see. Monica was afraid of that, not because of her plan, but because she's facing the consequences of the damage that she's inadvertently caused. The only way to do, do the right thing is to face it head on. So easy to just duck away from conflict and wait for it to blow over. That's not enough. To truly respect someone's feelings after you've hurt them is to face them and admit your wrongdoing. Not the wrongdoing of mismanaging the club, but the wrongdoing of disrespecting Natsuki's feelings. Okay, do you think we can get her to come to the meeting tomorrow? I can do that. Okay, awesome. Yuri, you don't have to worry about anything, but thank you for being my friend. You're a good listener. Mm hmm Fidging with her hair, Yuri turns away to hide a smile. Well, I guess it's different today. It's gonna be a pretty quiet club meeting. 
I'm gonna step out for a bit, if that's, if that's okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna read with Yuri. Hey, is that one of Suki's books? How come they're out here? Siri picks up the manga that was re resting on an adjacent desk. Oh, that's because, um, that Suki probably just left it out by accident. I thought she hadn't been coming to the club. Actually, Monica's been... Okay, Yuri, I'm sure it's just someone else, uh, using the club room then, okay? Monica smiles at them both. <laughs> if a wave, she exits the classroom. I really shouldn't have left that out. Sarah catches on. She should definitely tell Natsuki. And that would get really awkward. I wonder if there's a keyboard I could borrow from the music. Oh, was it, Josh? I guess they're going to run the spear. Not that it's a surprise, considering how cool the UFC show was. The Roth, maybe that'll be the Netflix debut, yeah. Or it could be the Roth or Mania. Time for the next club meeting has already arrived. Monica and Yuri are the first to arrive. I'm so worried. He thinks they're always going to be able to bring that Suki. Yes. How do you know? Well, she's Sayori. Hmm. You know, you're right. Time slowly passes. Monica sits and stands up to pace again, then sits again. Yuri's eyes don't move from her book. And the door finally opens. Sayori marches inside. Behind her, Natsuki shuffles inside, nervously looking around the room. We're here! Welcome back! Monica, the club president, stands up and greets him with a smile. Sayori picks the desk and takes a seat, and Natsuki sits closely next to her. Looking back and forth between the club members, Monica is struck with a nostalgic feeling. She would stand in front of the club room just like this, struggling to picture just who may eventually be sitting before her. But imagination was never enough to predict how unique and diverse every member would be. Uh, each with her own struggles. Her own reasons for seeking... Each with their own... Oh, wait, wait. Each with her own struggles, her own reasons for seeking the vision that Monica had, Admittedly, so vaguely advertised. Seeking trust, understanding, respect. What new lessons will the future hold for the literature club? Realizing she's getting ahead of herself, Monica takes a deep breath and returns to the present. Okay, everyone! The literature club is starting! We have an activity plan for today! Monica turns to face the chalkboard. On it, she writes manga in big letters. Today, we're going to learn from an expert about the unique form of literature. Manga. Oh, come on! <laughs> this is kind of forced. I think you don't actually want to do this. Just... Monica shakes her head. Natsuki? This is the hardest part. After making this far, it would be so easy to smile and move on. That's not enough. Not this time. I'm sorry. It was wrong of me to not take you seriously when you were kind enough to show interest in my club. I thought about it, and I realized how biased I was being against manga. Caused me to disrespect you, and I'm sorry. I think you deserve to be able to share your passion with us. So, can I make it up to you? Well, thanks, but... I think you're only doing this because he already told you to. Wait, is that true? Uh, Monica planned this all by herself. I didn't even get a chance to talk to her. I was witness to that as well. This is the Ledger Club. The Ledger Club is the place where everyone gets to be themselves. We all have our own interests and our own differences. It's my vision to let us freely express that. It's my goal to respect everyone for them. I just want to learn about things that make you happy. I think you deserve to share that joy just as much as everyone else does. Is that okay? Now, Siki looks away and hesitates. But, it's really dumb. The stuff I'm into... Monica smiles. She kneels in front of that Siki's desk, looking her straight in the eye. If you like it, then it's not dumb. Oh, except for me. Sarah, you're not dumb either. <laughs> what the heck? You guys are so weird. Fine, I'll show you some of my manga. Only because you admitted it's literature, after all. And Suki stands up. Oh yeah, I didn't say this before, but... I'm actually in writing, too. I'm kind of a pro. I don't want you to like me just for that. Oh, really? I really did have you all wrong, Natsuki. Yeah, whatever. It's not about that anyway, right? It's about manga, so I hope you're ready. A week has passed since Natsuki returned to the literature club. Since then, the club activities have been in full swing. Each club member has received a day of the spotlight to share all of their favorite kinds of literature with each other. As never meeting draws to a close, Monica approaches Natsuki on the way out. 
Uh, Suki, are you in a hurry home or anything? Uh, me? No, not particularly. Why? Oh, there's just something I wanted to show you if you had a few minutes. I'm sure, what is it? It's not in here. Can you follow me to the music room? Music room? Why? Well, you'll see. You know, I was thinking back. On the club, it's me and Sayori. We were talking about how we envisioned the club to turn out. I cared a lot about being a place where people could express themselves. That's something strange to me. I said that I was trying to make a club that I needed myself more than anyone. But I think it wasn't until you joined that I finally, I fully understood that. Because you really taught me a lot about myself. Like, things that I was probably always too stubborn to admit. Oh, come on, you can't mean that. I didn't even do anything. I just, like, brought a bunch of manga and then got fussy when it ended my way. It's really stupid of me to make such a big deal out of it. No, I honestly needed it. If you didn't express that you were hurt, I wouldn't have realized that I did something wrong. Besides, your feelings are valid. They deserve to be hurt and respected. It's just really hard to feel that way sometimes. You know, like, I, I really shouldn't care whatever people think in the first place, but when you're just criticized by everyone around you for being a certain way, it can get really hard to just brush it off. It makes it start to feel like I'm the problem. Like I'm not doing enough to please everyone else. Am I being too entitled if I just want people to like me? Without having to hide a bunch of stuff about myself? I don't think I am. I wish that sometimes people would try to appreciate me for who I actually am. As Monica listens, she recalls vividly how Natsuki's friends were treating her, and how naturally they did so. How long has she been fighting against that, refusing to change for others? I could only wish I'm as strong as you are, Natsuki. You're so honest with yourself. I'm like, though I was trying to come off as perfect for other people. Anytime there's a hint of connection, I just... There's a hint of connect contention, I just stumble. But it's thanks to you that I really started uh, thinking about this stuff. You really inspired me to start working on it. But... I, like I said, I didn't do anything. You were just being yourself. That's all you needed to do. Also, there's something else. Hmm? Monica takes a breath. Uh, the thing is, I might have read a bit of your manga. What? You? What the heck? Why didn't you tell me? I'm sorry. I just felt like kind of embarrassed to admit it. After I gave you such a hard time about it. <laughs> I can't believe you of all people reading manga behind my back. That's so funny. Yeah, well... I slipped for one of them out of curiosity, but I ended up reading a whole bunch of it. But I mean, one of those characters was in the literature club. What are the odds, right? You're reading Parfait Girls? Wow, you have good taste. Just one volume. I kind of picked it up randomly. Well, you have good intuition, then. You have to tell me about all your favorite parts. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, I think it's some kind of weird fate. Because the character isn't just in the literature club, she also plays piano. Weird, because I always want to learn piano. She was like the perfect person... But I always wish I was. If I just did what I wanted, instead of always second-guessing myself. Monica walks over to the piano and sits down. I always felt like I should only share the absolute best parts of myself. Parts that always impress people or make them like me more. But after you joined the club, I really realized how self-destructive that mentality is. We share things because we want to express ourselves. Sharing our experiences allow us to share emotions. I just felt like, like wanting to show you this, because it wasn't for you. I, I never would have started playing. <laughs> wait, I think the, uh, the credit that goes to Parfait Girls, not me. No. Well, maybe it's true. Parfait Girls put the thought in my head. But still, you that inspired me to keep practicing every day. Every day? Did you know? You just make me feel like I want to do something. I should just do it. I mean, I still haven't been practicing for very long. I'm really not any good at it, like, at all. But I wrote a song for the club, and I worked really hard on it. Oh, this is doing her monologue over from the end of the game. Doesn't have any words or anything, but, well, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Not what I expected.
to like a second ending of the game. But there's still one more story, so. Oh, Nafta. They haven't come out with a physical release yet? Didn't that game come out like a year ago or something? That's all. That was so good. It was? Yeah, are you kidding? You're like already a pro. Ah, no, not even close. Does the song have a name? You said it's found a club, so... Yeah, it's called My Song, Your Note. Oh, Dead Rising. Oh, okay. That makes more sense. Because everyone brings something so unique to the club. It's completely different from how I first imagined it, I think. But I was just, like, such a selfish perfectionist. That shouldn't be about me, it should be about everyone! And it's all of you who helped shape the club into what it is. I would never change that. Well, I think that's really thoughtful. And kind of flattering. I feel like I don't deserve as much validation. I wasn't exactly very patient either when I first joined the club. I actually feel like I should probably apologize too. I think I was really fed up with a lot of things and got frustrated after not getting my way in the club. So yeah, I really didn't mean to take it out on you. I was being really immature. <laughs> if you get my stubborn butt to apologize, I guess you're doing something right. It's fine, I'm past it too. I think we're already even. But it's really sweet that you're thinking about it. it. Takes a lot of maturity to reflect on that kind of thing. Very true, Jimbo. Well. Well, I wonder who I got it from. Hmm? Oh, never mind. Anyway, we're even as long as you let me keep my manga in the club room. You did admit it's a formal edge, or you can't take that back now. You got me. The closet's all yours. Hey, <laughs> I had to grab Deadland 2 on, on Steam when the Gold Edition goes live. Hmm. Uh, I'll tell you what. I'll bring in a little some. I'll bring in a little something for the club tomorrow. I want to do something nice. And I'll bring a little something for the club tomorrow. I want to do something nice in return. What kind of something? Oh, you'll see. I don't think you'll be disappointed. It's probably gonna be cupcakes. The next club mem meeting ends up being a particularly tasty one. Ah, uh, yes. So we got balance next time. Okay. Cool. So again, I will be on early and shorter tomorrow. Probably shorter than this. Um, because I got and I got stuff to do tomorrow. Um, and then we'll do marbles Wednesday, Thursday, Friday this week. For today, though, we went about two and a half hours. Follower count is 5523. Uh, I don't know if anything happened today. I don't remember. I don't think so. Okay. Uh, let me see who's live and I'll raid somebody. Let's check my followers list. I don't even know if I'm going to watch it, Quid, to be honest. I might watch it until we start getting our ass kicked and then I'm going to turn off. <laughs> All right. Hope you guys enjoyed the stream today. For those of you guys that know I stream every single day, so I'll be right back on here tomorrow, and I will see you guys then. Good night, guys.